everyone. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. It is Corrine Rayson from The Crew Coach, and I have a wonderful guest with us, Nikki Lutz. How are you? Hi, everyone. I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped up. <laughs> Amazing. Your energy is out of this world. Like, I was so tired before, and now that I'm connecting with you, I'm like, <laughs> whoa, I feel like I've just had 10 expressions. <laughs> you can take it. I have so much. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So um, today we're going to talk about leaving yachting and how difficult it is for some to make that transition. How long ago were you in the industry and how long did you work in the industry for? So I've been out of the industry for about three years now and I was in it for about seven. Uh, the last two or three years of yachting, I was like, I'm done. But I always went back for another season because of those golden handcuffs. Yes. And um, I mean, I'm from South Africa, but then I moved to Australia with my ex. Okay, this is it. We're done. Went back for another season. Did the season, hated it, got out, went back for another season. Hated it, got out, went back for another season. And eventually I was just like, I can't. <laughs> okay. So what made you finally draw that line in the sand? Sure. Even talking about it, I get goosebumps. Um, you know, I just feel like when we're on a path, we're all on a, on our life path and we have this little intuition. We have this, this knowing, we have this voice that talks to us. Mm -hmm. And so often we push it away and we don't listen and we do what we're, what we think we should be doing. We do what we're told we should be doing. We follow what society says we should be doing. And that little voice though is there. So at a point, the voice started to say, there's something more, there's something more. You should be doing something different, but I didn't want to listen to it because I was too scared. Mm. And eventually the more I started to actually connect to myself and figure out who am I, what do I want? What is the meaning of life? The, the message was stronger and stronger. And when I took, I had the guts really to listen to that voice, it was, it was like black and white. There was no gray. I just knew. <laughs> and I can totally relate to it. I can even remember when I was going through those emotions, I was in the Maldives and I was, I, f I felt like I was riddled in pain. I'm like, I can't physically do this anymore. And it's also to do with my values and what was happening on the boat and the wastage and I just wanted to make a difference and make an impact and I feel like I wasn't doing that so I wasn't being true to myself but at the same time I was so grateful for yachting because yachting really consolidated it for me what I wanted to do with my life and I was like that's it I know I want to help people I want to make a difference I don't know exactly how that looks like but I'm going to study a degree in counseling and then see where it takes me but I also had to take that leap of faith in order to get there and I can understand how fear can immob immobilize you. But what I hear what you're saying is rather use fear as your energy to make that change. Yeah. 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 And it, it really is difficult. Like when you're making such a big decision, especially if you've been in the industry for a while and you start to identify with that. And I think that that's in anything in life. You know, when I was in school, I was a pole vault athlete and that was my identity. I was the pole vaulter. Mm -hmm. Then I studied sports science and then I was the sports scientist. And then I was in yachting and then I was the yachty. And then I moved to Australia and I was the South African living in Australia. And we take on these identities and we think that's who I am. And then when we want to break away from it, we're like, but what am I going to do? Because you feel so lost mm. and it's not your identity. So yachting for me was the best thing I could have done at that time in my life. Mm. And then it was time to move on, you know, but it's, yeah, it's you, like I used to see make yachting work for you. Like it's just a job. It's not who you are. Yeah. So with all those different identities or hats that you had in those various positions, did you notice a common theme of values that you showed or came up for you quite um, strongly with all those positions? I think, I think more so it was just this belief around needing to be the best. So it's not really a value, but it was just this idea of anything you do, you have to be the best at it. And I think that's why I always 
decided to, or maybe that's why it was so hard for me to break away from every identity because it's like, yeah, but I've put so much into it uh -huh. and I've become the best at what I, what I'm doing and people know me for this. And I, mm -hmm. I felt so proud mm -hmm. and then it's like, but it doesn't align with me anymore. And yes, then my values changed and my desires changed and I grew as we're all always growing. And then as I grew and I'm like, well, this is not serving me anymore. And it is like your head and your heart are, are not in alignment and you don't feel, you just, you don't feel like it's right for you. Um, that's not really answering your question. <laughs> what I'm hearing is like, it's our ego more than anything else. So it's our ego telling us like, this is who you are. But deep down, it's like, no, like my values are helping people serving people making an impact in their life so that they can be the best version of themselves it's not yeah. me the athlete not me the yachty who's got a sensational income and can buy properties and all that like there's something more and that's mm -hmm. living your true identity when you figure that out so how did you figure that out I really it's, it's actually not as hard as we think it is because we don't have to go look for it. You know, we think we have to search for what that is and what is my purpose. But I don't believe in that. I think that we know it already. Like, and I think at the end of the day as well, that whole thing around service, like we aren't just here on this planet just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, are you making an impact in someone else's life? Are you making a change? Are you, you know, putting a smile on someone's face? Because that's what it's all about. It's not just about me, me, me. At the end of the day, you can't just, you know, you can't just live alone. So um, I think that it was just pretty much, it just all unfolded. I also, I just knew I wanted to be of service. I knew when I was even in school, mm -hmm. I would, you know, friends said, well, can you write out like an exercise plan for me? Because I was the sporty one. Um, I just wanted to, to do things for my family, for my friends. Um, in yachting, when I'd go and do, you know, turn down or turn up or anything or ironing those shirts, I was like, I'm going to iron the shirt the best. Like I'm going to be the best <laughs> girl in laundry or I'm going to clean that cabin so well because I, it wasn't for me. It was, I wanted to make, you know, do a good job for, for everyone else. Mm. Um, so it really just figuring out what my next step was, was to actually break away from the idea of what I thought I had to be and what everyone said I had to do um, and feel into my heart and say, okay, fine, I do want to be of service. How do I want to do this? And I did my yoga teacher training course when I was still in yachting. Um, and I loved that. And that guided me closer to my heart and to what was important to me. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, fine. You know, I, I want to do more. I want to learn more about myself. And the more I learned about myself, the more I realized I've got the freedom within and I need to share this with other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting you referred back to childhood because we just did a unlock your career potential challenge with um, a handful of crew members and I give them set activities for each day. And one of them is to reflect on your childhood, uh, childhood activities. So what did you love doing as a kid? And some people would say, oh, we would, you know, it was interesting. Like the chefs would say, I would like bake and cook food and have tea parties and, and they chefs now, but yeah, that's what's so fascinating. However, some of us get tainted by these belief systems, whether it's our parents and we adopted as our own and you know about belief systems. We've chatted about this before or what society says that we should do rather than what we want to do. And I think that's also a lot of conflict, internal conflict for people to make that break and go, I want to do this for me and not feel guilty about it. So, mm. yeah, that was fascinating to have a look at that. We looked at family scripts. We looked at, you know, the limiting belief, beliefs, excuse me, and we looked at stream of consciousness. So I would say some words and, you know, what words resonate with you instead of like thinking like, and yeah, as you said, connecting with gut rather, like training that to go with your intuition rather than your head. So, yeah, it was fascinating so we now made it a 10 day challenge because the, the girls were like, no, we don't want it to be five. We want to make it 10. But I think because there's so much value in exploring that because you get liberated from 
these limiting beliefs. And I love to say like, cleanse yourself from them because they don't serve you. It's keeping you stuck. So tell me a bit more about what you do. So I am a self-love and transformational coach. I mean, that's what I call myself now. But as saying that, I I think, well, is this just another identity that I (laughs) am identifying with? Um, I, you know, I help women and men really break free from those beliefs and everything that's holding them back Um, and for them to see their true potential and for them to step into their higher self and for them to actually start falling in love with their life. Because I think that a lot of people believe that life is hard. I'm a victim. You know, it's just really difficult. Some people really, it's easy for them, but for me, it's just, it's unfortunately, it's not, you know, I've got a hard life and that's not true because our outer world is just a reflection of our inner world. And if you look at the people who have energy, who are happy, who are content, who have peace, who know what they want, that living a life of purpose and passion, everything in the outer world looks great, but it's only because, or it's only reflecting what's happening inside. So they're doing the work internally. They're, you know, they've got positive thoughts. They choose the way they want to feel because that's our power. We can't control what's happening outside. We like to think we can, but we really can't. Mm -hmm. But we have got control, full control, 100%. No one can take from us Mm -hmm. what's going on inside. And that's our power. Yeah. And another thing as well is we have a choice in how we feel. No one can make us feel something. No one can make us feel angry even though it kind of makes sense like this person did this and now I'm angry but you can go hold on a minute how do I want to view this situation I I don't want to hold on to anger because it doesn't serve me I'd rather choose compassion I feel you know sorry for them or whatever it is um do you notice a pattern with regards to what keeps people stuck in in particular yachties like with belief systems or anything like that have you noticed anything a massive, massive thing, I think, is this uh, money yeah. topic and yeah. issue, you know, like, um, what am I going to do when I leave yachting? How can I make as much money mm-hmm. out of yachting as in yachting? Mm-hmm. Um, what do I even do, you know, like, because it's such a, like, specific, whatever, um, uh, what's the word? either interior or deck or engineering or chefs, the, the department, whatever department you're in, you know, very specific. So I'm a, I'm a stewardess, but I don't want to go into hospitality when I leave the yachts yes. or I was a deckhand. And now what do I do when I leave? It, like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the thing that holds them back mm-hmm. because they are so scared of taking the next step. But at some point you have to take that next step. Mm-hmm. So and I, I think th- a massive, Sorry, I think the massive thing then that that is like an underlying belief around that then is that there's just fear and not thinking that they are good enough, not thinking that they would, will exceed when they leave, not thinking that they can start something new, almost like this limiting belief around themselves and their self-worth and their self-belief and their, you know, everything to do with themselves. And it'd be such a hard thing to go through because it's, it's like being in prison, really as you mentioned before, the golden handcuffs, and you feel like you're a slave to the industry. Like that's all you you are. You get told when you eat, when you go to bed, like all of that. And what I've noticed recently with COVID, that there's more men coming for counseling specifically. And the World Health Organization defines mental health. Part of it is not living your purpose like not doing work that's fulfilling and this particular deckhand he was brought on as a yoga teacher and personal trainer and he was on night shifts and he was like I feel so low I feel so depressed I don't know why and then we unpacked it and it was like yeah because you're not using your strengths you're not doing what brings you joy and that's why and I think you know you can you find yourself in a downward spiral and it's hard to get out of it until you get perspective and feedback and that's something that we do in the course design a career that you love you do a research inquiry and you ask people specific open questions to get feedback on how they perceive you because you might be blinded to some amazing talents that you have yeah 
That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can talk about this forever because I find it, I, I love it. I, and I love human behavior. And I think you're right. Like it's liberating ourselves from that fear because it's only a perceived threat. It doesn't really exist. It's not real. Yeah. And, and I think as well, like the whole idea around um, these golden handcuffs and being in the industry when you actually don't really want to be anymore, because I think that like my experience of yachting, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it, loved it, would totally, you know, do it again if I had to relive my life. But towards the end, that was when I was getting that calling of, okay, now it's time to move on. And I think that we need to be smart when we're in that space mm -hmm. and you know it doesn't mean okay I need to quit my job and now what but when you start getting those signs of there's something more there's something more I'm not 100% fulfilled use your time on board like you're getting a salary you've got all this food you've got your medical you've got it you know you don't have to pay for accommodation you're hardly wearing any clothes you're always in a uniform you've got no expenses save your money Spend time on yourself, figure yeah. out what do I want to do when I want to leave. Say I'm doing yachting for another year and I'm making yachting work for me. I'm not a slave to yachting. Yachting is I'm choosing to be here yeah. and stop complaining that you're in the industry. You're there. You've chosen it. Yes. But choose how you want to feel every day. And then yachting itself has made me the woman I am today. Like for me running a business mm. so successfully yeah. is thanks to yachting I know. because I learned time management. I learned how to work under pressure. I learned how to ha have like five-star service. It has to be amazing, you know, discipline. So like so often we're like, I'm in it. This sucks. I hate it. Okay, but you, no one put you, made you go there. You decided to be in the boat. So change that mindset. Instead of that downward spiral you're talking about, create an upward spiral, get super pumped, get super excited, visualize what you want, feel like that, even though you're not there yet. No, okay, when I do live my dream life, how would I feel? Oh my gosh, I'd feel excited every day. I'd feel full of love and happiness. Start to feel that now, figure out how you can do it. You know, whether it's just through a gratitude journal and dancing outside or doing something, but you know, we have to start thinking about our future because what we're doing today is creating that future. Yeah, it's gonna influence it. And it's also making the best of your time on board. And that's what you're saying as well. If I was a yachty now, I would be like, put me on watch, put me on watch because you've got, you paid to do nothing, but you're not really doing, I'd be like listening to TED talks and investing myself, going to you for a self-love course or whatever it is, you know, like there's so much opportunity. You don't even realize it. Like there's a big world out there. And with the, especially with COVID, I mean, we're getting all sorts of different work opportunities available to us. So it's so important to, do your research and be open-minded to what is. Last question for you. Um, when you said that you left the industry and then you were like, came back again and you did it about three times, was there any difference each time, each time with regards to the fear and the reason why you left and why you chose to go back? Or was it pretty much similar? Um. I would say that the first thing, and this is not answering a question, but it's just popping in my mind. The first thing that I'm like, that K, the, the feeling that got stronger and stronger was every time I went back, I hated it even more, which is interesting because it was every time against my intuition. Okay. But I think the fear, yeah, that it was always the same fear, but what will I do? But what will I do? Like, okay, now I'm, 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 I'm out of the end. I tried to get out the industry. I was out for six months but what do I do? And I was just so caught up in the, the, the continuous thought of, but there is nothing as good as this. You know, I can't make as much money doing something I love. Um, so definitely fear of, of actually stepping into my power. Um, mm -hmm. And now, you know, I have my own business that I'm filled with love, filled with joy. Yeah. Make the same money as yachting, doing a thing I like, you yeah. know, so it's possible. But three years ago, could I see it clearly? No. No. When I told my parents, did they see it? No, they can't even believe what I'm doing right now. They laughed at me when I said, I want to be a self-love coach. They were like, what are you talking about? But if you have a vision and you have a feeling, 
it's, it's your life. You know, yeah. you know. It's enough. And that's my biggest lesson is that when I follow my gut, I do not fail. I can't fail. It's impossible for me to fail. And I trusted myself enough. I knew that I had to leave. And I knew that it was some doing something in the helping space. I thought I was going to work with children, then work with prisoners, and now work with yachties. So it took me a while to find my pathway, but I've got no regrets with doing with what I, I did, working in those different areas. Like it brought so much joy. And I think, again, that's why I can do what I can, what I do today is because of those experiences. But just trust yourself. Go with what feels right to you. And that's, yeah. and that's I do. integrity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, that making that decision and, and leaving the industry mm-hmm. um, and finding something new, I think most times it doesn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, it is a process. Mm-hmm. And I think that we are so attached to this instant gratification uh-huh. um, and, and, and needing things right now instead of enjoying the process. You know, if you, if you want to get out the industry and you've got money behind you that can, can support your new dreams, or at least that you're not struggling, some people want to try something new and they have no money. They have no savings. They didn't have the opportunity to make all the money on the yachts, you know? Um, but if you have something different, just stick with it. Just try, evolve, you know, go through, go through the motions. Yeah. And that's another thing going back to ego. I think it's so important because I feel like as a Yoshi, you kind of get the sense you've got status as well. And that's why the transition can be so hard. So I left yachting, studied and worked as a nanny. And I didn't have that attitude. Like it sucked. I was like, this is not ideal. But when the kid was sleeping, I was studying. I'm like, cool, I'm getting paid to study. This is great. But if I was, if felt entitled, then yeah, I don't think I would get very far. I think it's being humble and going, yep, I've kind of got a vision and accepting, you know, making those sacrifices, not just saying, putting your nose up to it and going, I'm not going to be working as a bartender. Like, no, I'm not doing that. I want 80 grand or 150 grand a year. And Mm. yeah, I had to have less, but at the end of the day, I've got way more and it was so worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the thing. It's that it's, it's, it's connecting to yourself again and have, and not putting your nose up, figuring out what it is that you want, taking the next stepping stones, even if it feels like a step backwards, but you're moving in a new direction and the, the right direction. Amazing. Thanks so much, Nikki. So how do people find you? So Instagram is the best. Um, yeah. So yeah, any inspiration, any motivation, and you know, I've always got little videos, um, stories and stuff. So, and also I just really like connecting with people. So if anyone wants to just connect and be like, Hey, you know, how's it going <laughs> and ask any questions, but yeah, I want to just help. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, Nikki. Well, thank you so much for your time and sharing your knowledge. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Take thank care. you so much. <laughs> okay. Lots of love. <laughs>